Hi, guys. Welcome to the podcast. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you joining me. It's been a real challenging week for me. I tell you what, it's Thursday morning, and I'm in Hope heading up to Kelowna with a load of steel. And I have, this is a first podcast of the week. I've just been so busy driving. It's been snowing like crazy. It's been cold. The roads have been bad. Accidents abound. And it's the time of year, I tell you, where you question your sanity and being a truck driver. I've delivered four loads, covered about 2,000 miles so far. And I have two days left, but I'm exhausted already. I'm just beat. And in the winter, most of these loads get tarped too, which is physical work. So it's been good for my body, good to recover from all that gluttony over the Christmas break. But at the same time, I am wiped. I'm not 20 anymore. I used to be able to work and not feel it, but uh, I'm feeling it now. Um, I have a, a difficult podcast to try and, and convey to you. But I'm going to just jump right into it with an analogy. Now, let's pretend you and I are on a fishing trip to the same old fishing hole. It's a pond about 300 feet across. And it's a good fishing spot. There's a lot of fish in that little pond. We know that. We've fished there before. We've always had luck. It's a good pond. Across the road from that is a lake. 9,700 feet across. Great big lake that no one has ever fished in. Now, I want to know your opinion on that. Do you think that's a well-stocked lake? No one fishes on it. A boat has never been seen. No dock. No one on shore casting a line. Nothing. No one's ever been to that lake. What are your? What is your take on that? If this little pond next to it has a lot of fish, I'll guarantee you. I I can't give you a number, but I you know. I'm 99% certain that there's a lot more fish in that lake. If this little pond has fish, that big lake, it's a, it's a sure thing. Well, scientists are starting to look at this in terms of matter and energy. Uh, all, all life requires matter and energy. You and I are the products of matter and energy. The trees are, the galaxies are, everything. Everything is a product of matter and energy. And... Our matter and energy that we measure, that we deal with, that makes up our physical world is literally that 300 foot across pond. It's just a small pond. But right across from us is this big honking lake. And scientists are starting to consider that lake and say, well, it takes matter and energy to have life. We have matter and energy in the pond and we have a lot of life. They have matter and energy over there in that lake. I'll bet you there's life over there. But the scientists came up uh, and more and more are getting on board with this idea that, yes, there must be life in that big lake. There must be life. But <laughs> I love it because they're in darkness, because they do not know the Lord. Their conclusion is that they are probably invisible aliens, invisible aliens in that lake. I kid you not, straight up. That's what they conclude. They will conclude any absurdity as long as God isn't a part of it. I, literally, uh, Charles, no, Richard Dawkins, the preeminent, the prince of atheists, concluded that, yes, we were probably seeded. This planet was probably seeded by an ancient life form, a, a far more evolved life form. And what he's doing is... A circular logic because where did the advanced civilization come from they have to have that magical moment and magic isn't a strong enough word where a single cell comes into being it, it's absolutely bizarre any scientist worth his salt realizes something so hyper complex doesn't happen by chance. It's the same as you and all your extended family winning the lottery every week for, I believe it was 90 years. It just won't happen, period, ever. And the scientists realize that. So they're starting to look at alternatives because evolution is a, is a really old theory. It's 150 years old. And Charles Darwin thought that living cells were nothing more than little bits of like Play-Doh. 
just living blobs. And you could put the Play-Doh together into bigger blobs and form whatever you liked out of it. And when Charles Darwin saw mold growing on a sandwich, he assumed that was spontaneous generation of life, that life literally just spontaneously sprang up. And, and that is what the theory of evolution needs for it to exist, is that life just spontaneously happens. While we have come an awful long ways down the road in science, we've uncovered enough truth to absolutely shoot evolution in the head and drag it out behind the barn and forget about it. Uh, life cannot spontaneously generate. Life always comes from life. There is no alternative. There is no exception. That's just the way it is. Anyways, I'm getting a little, little sidetracked there. Um, they're, they're looking at dark matter and energy, which consume literally 97% of our universe. And they're saying there has to be life in that. Now, dark matter, dark energy are just words that are describing matter and energy that we're unable to measure, unable to experience, unable to touch. So I'm just going up a hill behind a really slow moving truck and it's covered in ice. I'm hoping he gets his button gear because I really don't want to chain up for this little hill. <laughs> I got to chain up in a little while to go up another hill and one is enough for me. I'm an old man. But anyways, the, the scientists are concluding that there has to be life in that big lake. And I agree with them 100%. That's a big honking lake and it's got matter and energy. The things you need for life, I'll guarantee you, dark matter and energy is teeming with life. Now, I hate the term dark matter and dark energy because it gives you the idea that it's sinister, spooky, evil. It's nothing like that. They chose that name because they have absolutely no idea what it is. So I prefer the terminology that that's the matter and energy that is above. And we are the matter and energy that is below. Now, interestingly, you and I are using 3% of our brain right now. Scientists know this and they used to admit it 15 years ago. They have recently backpedaled away from that claim and they're trying to bury that claim, though the, the data and the observations remain the same, remain unchanged. Our brain, when we're doing something, when we're thinking, you see small parts of it starting to warm up. You know, it's like an engine that is running on one cell, not even one cylinder. Maybe if it was a million cylinders, it would be running on one cylinder. It's barely doing anything. And scientists are looking at this mass between our ears that is such a miraculous thing. They don't have a clue what it is. They, they make speculations, but I can make speculations just like them, but I don't have a government grant. <laughs> That's the only difference. But uh, we're using 3% of our brain and our matter and energy make up 3% of the universe. Do you kind of see a correlation there? Do you kind of think maybe our brain is capable of interacting with the whole shebang, the small pond and the big pond, that maybe that's the way God designed us, but the fall kind of shut off the main breakers and left us on auxiliary power for the duration. And when Jesus returns, bada bing, bada boom, the lights go on. And suddenly you and I are firing on all cylinders. I, I don't even, I can't imagine. It takes my breath away to think about the sudden awareness, our eyes just being opened more and more and more and more and our minds being filled with understanding. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm like a little kid in a candy store. And I know that in a little while, we're going to be given a bag and turned loose and I can't wait. But anyways, there is life. I believe very firmly there is life in the above energy and matter. And that's what we call the spirit world. The spirit world is above and the carnal world is below. The spirit world operates in full reality. We operate at 3% of reality and scientists know this. There's many different reasons to believe that our experience of reality is basically like a matrix, like a computer program, a holographic image. 
it, it feels very real to us, but in reality, it's not. It, every single particle of matter, if you take the nucleus, the protons and neutrons, and make expand that to the size of a tennis ball in your hand, then the electrons orbiting around that tennis ball aren't five feet away, and they're not 10 feet away. They are four to eight kilometers away, little particles moving, not in an elliptical orbit, as the NASA logo would suggest, but seeming to appear exactly where we need them to be. And they've done other tests that are very bizarre. The double slit experiment, look it up on YouTube. A electron behaves differently when you're observing it. It behaves one way when it's not being observed and a different way when it is being observed, meaning that you and I, the observers, shape reality. The electrons appear where they need to be to create the reality that we perceive. And, and this is science. I'm not talking science fiction or fantasy here. I'm talking provable, demonstrable science. And another thing they found was that DNA inside of a vacuum with only protons inside, what, how would protons respond to human DNA? And the protons were not indifferent. They began to form themselves around the DNA and take the shape of the DNA. The protons respond to us. It's, these are two different scientific tests that they've done that show our matter and energy are being affected by us. Our reality is there when we need it, but what becomes when we're not looking, when we're not observing, no one really knows. But it confirms the fact that we are living in 3% reality right now, literally. And uh, <clears throat> I want to consider what is going on in the big reality, in the big lake right now. We know there are infinitely bigger fish over there. We've got angels. We've got Jesus, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, interceding over there on our behalf. For you and me, he stands and makes intercession continually. And that's pretty exciting. That's pretty incredible. The act of being born again is, is also remarkable when we perceive what's going on. You are born. Not in the pond. Your spirit is born over there. Your spirit is born in that big lake. That's what being born again is. And that's why we look for regeneration. We look for a change in the person who's been born again. We look for them to experience God for themselves. So that only they know, only they can answer the question whether or not they're born again. Did they experience that coming to life? in the spirit world. Now they are an infant. They are a baby over there, but nonetheless, they have life over there. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ right now. Our spirits are over there in the big lake, seated now in heavenly places with Christ. And that's why he tells us, don't set your eyes on the things of the world. He says, listen, guys, your, your body is trapped in a little pond that smells horrible. And it's full of sharks. But I want you to set your eyes on the big lake over here because a part of you lives there. And I want you to focus on the part of you that's living in the big lake. And I want you to develop there. I want you to grow there. I want you to swim with me. And that's exciting. We've been called to so much more. And our carnal blindness, our limited brains just fail to pick up on this reality. Listen, the word of God is truth. And in there, we are taught how to swim over there. And I hope that the desire of this message is to drive into you a hunger for the living word of God that's going to teach you about your life over there in the real reality. Don't waste another day trying to cobble something together in this stinking fetid pool of death. There's a part of you over there in reality that needs your attention, that you need to be focused on. Store up your treasures over there. 
devote your heart and your mind to what's taking place over there. And I, I want to do a, a, a separate podcast about the battle that's taking place over there, the battle that you and I need to play a part in. Thanks for joining me. God bless you and be strengthened.